let me motivate the notion of observability by starting with a very simple example. Consider a classical Cauchy problem. x dot of t equals an operator a times x of t. This is an ordinary differential equation on a Banach space where a is an operator probably unbounded from a domain to the Banach space x. And of course, we also have an initial value x of 0 denoted by x0 that also stems from x. In addition to our state x, who comes as a solution of our Cauchy problem, assume that we do not have access to x directly, but only to a filtered version of x, which we will call y in the following. And y is created by mapping x through an operator c, which is in our case an operator, a bounded operator, from a Banach space x to another Banach space y. Now consider the following example. Let A be a classical diffusion operator. For example, think of the Laplacian. And let C be the multiplication operator with an indicator function. And here the indicator function is taken with respect to a set omega, which is a subset of the d-dimensional space. Consider now the following question. If we let our system evolve for a certain amount of time, we may ask if we can estimate the final state x of some finite time, capital T, by our observations y. And the form of the estimate that we are looking for is an integral estimate. So we want to estimate the norm of our final state by an integral of the norms of our observations y over the whole interval of observation. An estimate of this type is called a final state observability estimate. And we want to find certain conditions on our system to guarantee the existence of these type of estimates. So far, the governing components of our problem, namely the operator A and the observation operator C, they have been constant within time. And this is the next level of complexity that we want to add to our problem. In the first step, we go from classical Cauchy problems to non-autonomous Cauchy problems. This means instead of considering one operator A, we are now considering a time-dependent family of operators, but with the additional condition that their domains of definition are still constant. They don't change with time. Then, of course, we can also filter our observations with a non-autonomous filter, meaning we are now considering a family C of T of bounded operators. And of course, this also translates in our example. So A of T is now a family of diffusion operators with diffusion coefficients that depend on time. And our observation operator C now depends on time. And in our case, the multiplication now takes place with a family of sets that we restrict our observation to. In the end, the main question remains the same. Do we have a final observability estimate for our non-autonomous Cauchy problem?